train station on the 14th of September 2007. It's the last confirmed sighting of him in almost 15 years. He was aged just 14 at the time. On that day he skipped school, withdrew £200 and boarded a train in Doncaster with a one-way ticket to the capital. His picture has been posted across London by the charity Missing People repeatedly over the years. And today we've had news of a development. Detectives from South Yorkshire Police say two men aged 38 and 45 were arrested last month in London on suspicion of kidnap and human trafficking. Both have since been released under investigation. The older man was also questioned on suspicion of having indecent images of children. This is what Andrew might look like today as police continue to appeal for information over his whereabouts. Welcome to my channel, Most Mysterious Missing, where I analyse just some of the mysterious disappearances of people in the UK. A person is reported missing in the UK every 90 seconds, and just under half of those are children. Andrew Gosden, who was just 14 when he disappeared, was last seen on CCTV leaving King's Cross Station in London and despite numerous national appeals for information in the years following his disappearance his reason for travelling to London that day and his fate have not been established and he remains missing. Andrew disappeared from central London on the 14th of September 2007. He lived in a suburb of Doncaster, South Yorkshire, UK, and his parents are Christians. Prior to his disappearance, Andrew had not been to church for 18 months. He was a Boy Scout. But a few months before he disappeared, he told his father that he no longer wanted to be part of the group. His family described Andrew as a home bird who loved to be home, rarely left the house and never left without saying where he was going. At school, Andrew was a gifted student and had had a 100% attendance record at the Macaulay Catholic High School. He had been expected to score straight A's in his GCSE exams. He was an excellent mathematician and was destined for Cambridge. He hoped the upcoming school term would provide him more of a challenge as he cruised through his education thus far. Andrew didn't talk a lot about school to his parents. He was described as being happy with his own company, but was not a loner, and he had his own small group of friends. Though his family say he did not tend to socialise with his friends outside of school. He didn't seem to have any depression and there were no indications he had been bullied. So why did he disappear? So 
So what happened on that day back in 2007? Well, he left his house in Doncaster and he went to the cash machine and withdrew £200. Then he bought a one-way ticket to London. Why on earth did he buy a one-way ticket and not a return ticket? He was last seen on CCTV at King's Cross Station. But his reason for heading to London remain unknown. He didn't tell his parents he was going, nor why he was going. They knew nothing about his plans for travelling to the capital that day. Is it possible that Andrew had gone to London to meet somebody he met online? Well, there was no trace of activity by him on his home computer, school computer or local library computer. There was no evidence to suggest that he was going to London to meet someone he'd met online. Interestingly, during the 2007 school summer holidays, his parents had suggested that he travel alone to London to stay with his grandmother, but he decided he didn't want to go. At the time of his disappearance, he had only just returned to school following the summer holidays. And interestingly, in the days leading up to that day, he twice broke his normal routine, where he walked home from school rather than taking the school bus. Walking home from school would have been four miles, 6.4 kilometres home. And this would have taken him around one hour and 20 minutes. The night before he left, he was described by his family as being normal. The day was uneventful. They ate a meal together as usual and all washed up the dishes afterwards. Andrew spent an hour making a jigsaw with his dad. On the morning of his disappearance, he found it difficult to wake up and seemed quite irritable. And his mother said that this was rather unusual as he normally awoke on time. At five minutes past eight, he left his house for school and was seen walking across the local park, Westfield Park to his usual bus stop by a family friend, Reverend Alan Murray, who happened to be sitting on a park bench. However, instead of taking the school bus, he diverted from his usual route and continued to a cash machine at a local garage. He, here, he withdrew £200 from his bank account, which was almost all of his money. But the machine would only allow withdrawals of £20 increments. He was then seen by a neighbour's CCTV returning home. When home, he put his uniform in the washing machine and placed his blazer on the back of a chair. He changed into casual clothes, which was a black slipknot t-shirt and black jeans. He had with him a bag embellished with various patches of rock and metal bands, 
He took his wallet, keys, and a portable PlayStation. No other possessions were identified as missing by the family. However, it was quickly established he had not taken his passport. His father stated he did not appear to have taken a coat with him and had not even taken a charger for his PlayStation. He didn't even take £100 in cash that he had been saving up from his birthdays. Around 25 minutes later, he left his family home and was seen by CCTV heading down Littlemore Lane towards Westville Park. He walked all the way to Doncaster Railway Station and it was there that he purchased a one-way ticket to London which cost him around £31. The ticket seller later stated that she had told him that a return ticket would only cost him 50 pence more, but he insisted on purchasing a single ticket. A little while later, he was seen boarding the train to King's Cross Station and he was seen alone. A woman reported that she sat next to him and she described him as being quiet and fully engrossed in playing with his video game. When he failed to attend his morning lessons at his school, his teachers tried to contact his parents. The school stated that they had called his parents and left a message informing them that he had not attended school. However, on the wrong person's phone. He arrived at King's Cross Station at 20 past 11 in the morning and was captured on CCTV, leaving the main entrance of the station. This was the last confirmed sighting of him. The temperature in London on that day was 19 degrees Celsius or 66 degrees Fahrenheit, which is considered to be warm weather in the UK for that time of year. That evening, the Gosden family assumed he had been to school and then they sat down for dinner, believing he was either in the converted cellar playing video games or in his room doing homework. However, when they finally discovered he was not in the house, they thought he could be with a friend or a neighbour and had simply lost track of time. His parents telephoned his friends, who informed them that Andrew was not there and had not been at school that day. Then, around 7pm, the family called the police. Andrew's sister Charlotte stated, I quote, It was just a complete panic. We initially thought something must have happened on the way to school. When we found that he hadn't even been to school, or even tried to go to school, that was even more worrying." End quote. Charlotte and Andrew's father Kevin searched the route to school and areas nearby, but found no evidence. Within three hours of realising he had disappeared, a missing person leaflet was produced for circulation. His family and friends searched the area and continued to search until nightfall. During that weekend, the police searched the bushes near to Andrew's home in Doncaster, but again found no evidence. And three days later, after speaking to the woman who had sold him his train ticket, police confirmed that he had travelled to London. The ticket seller remembered Andrew well 
because he had refused a return ticket, despite it only costing a small amount more than a single. So let's look at the search for Andrew. Well, a few days after his disappearance, his family travelled to London and they handed out flyers and posters in the vicinity of anywhere they felt Andrew might have had an interest in visiting, especially museums and exhibitions, as those were a couple of his interests. The South Yorkshire Police said it asked British Transport Police to search the CCTV footage within two days of him going missing, but they could not pick him out of the crowds. Three weeks later, CCTV footage at King's Cross was again reviewed by British Transport Police and South Yorkshire Police, who finally identified Gosden. The CCTV image of Gosden leaving the main concourse at King's Cross was circulated in the media, accompanied by a close-up of his right ear, which has a distinctive double ridge. After police realised they could not find him on other CCTV footage in London, they decided to try to work out why he had decided to go to London in the first place. An early theory put forward by the family was that he had decided to take in some of the sights. He was known to enjoy London and would sometimes visit the capital with his family to see his grandparents, aunts and uncles and family friends who lived there. He also was known to enjoy visiting London museums and exhibitions. Travel on buses at that time was free for children, so he may have used the buses for free. 